friends let us begin with a question would you like any one of you to have an injection in your ear or maybe if i would say that you have a cut in your ear or stitches around your ear i am sure this very question has made some of you very uncomfortable it is so and now if i say that well your damaged ear can be repaired without a single stitch around your ear how would you like that i'm sure you are surprised let me tell you it is possible i am dr shabir indorwala i am an ent surgeon with 40 years of very active surgical practice i am the winner of the prestigious aoi award for our research on fascia and i am the pioneer of stitchless ear surgery well friends acute infection of middle ear is the commonest cause of childhood infection known to mankind we have a case load of 709 million cases every year fortunately they respond well to medical treatment but not all some of them have their ear severely damaged they get a hole in their ear drum or a perforation and this needs to be repaired we have 310 million cases who needs this repair at the moment of time the perforated ear drum causes deafness it causes pain in the ear and recurrent pus discharge from the ear you cannot neglect this if you neglect it over a period of time it causes permanent and irreversible deafness the damaged ear is repaired by aphasia graft there is a loss of tissue in the damaged ear drum and this is replaced by aphasia graft now what is aphasia graft let's look at this if you look at any part of your body it is covered with skin it's very clearly seen over here under the skin we have a layer of fat and under the fat we have a flat connective tissue which is called as fascia the flat connective tissue under the ear is fascia it's called as skin under skin or it is also called as a second skin this fascia is composed of soft fibers and elastic fibers the properties of elastic fibers and soft fibers are completely different and different parts of the body is covered with the same fascia but the proportion of elastic fiber and soft fibers changes and the properties of the fascia from part to part of the body changes it's something like your hand if you look at the skin of your hand it is taut it is tough it is without hair and it's very sensitive to touch look at the back of your hand it is hairy it is soft it is supple and it is very sensitive not to touch but temperature in the same way fascias have different properties it's the same fascia but properties are different surgeons across the world repair damaged ear drum by taking an incision on the ear something like this which is about 5 cm long and then they will reflect the ear forward and make uh, uh, and collect fascia from the from under the skin from around the ear and on deeper dissection they would make a bed for the fascia lay fascia over there and close the surgical wound this standard surgical practice has three serious downsides if you can avoid a cut around the ear it causes a because it causes a lot of pain and scarring second thing is because they use fascia from around the ear which has a greater tendency to shrink and this shrinkage causes recurrent perforation we'll see how this shrinkage causes recurrent perforation let's see if this is the drum if this is the drum and if this black thing is a hole in the drum and we put this fascia to close that drum it's a fascia which has been put to close the drum unfortunately this will shrink if this is what is going to happen you are going to bound to get those black holes looking staring back at you again and that is definitely unacceptable 
at the best, the standard surgical procedure has 90% success rate. And lastly, it takes about an hour's time to accomplish this surgical procedure. The three downsides of standard surgical procedure needed to be addressed for merited reason. If you can avoid scar or cut around the ear, it would be greatly helpful because it will be causing less pain, greater acceptance to the patient. If we can use some other tissue which will not shrink, this 90% can jump to 100% theoretically. And lastly, if we can reduce the time for surgery, a lot more patients can be addressed. I just told you that we have 310 million cases across the globe to address. Innovations are only possible if you have compulsions and ground realities working together. The compulsions of standard surgical procedure led us to think about it and after a lot of thinking we came to a conclusion that the fascia from lateral aspect of the th from the outer aspect of the thigh is much better a tissue to be used because it has a high content of collagen or elastic fibers. This was just a theory. This is what we thought about. After this we thought about after doing a lot of research. This theory had to be put to practical challenge. How do you do it? We were completely at loggerheads. We did not know what to do. We looked at all possible avenues and options available to us. We had no animal labs with us. We had no equipment with us. And the most important factor, our colleagues didn't believe in us at all. So we were lone people looking at how to go around. After a lot of research further, we came to the conclusion that the fascia of dogs and fascia of human beings have quite a bit of similarities. So we can try this procedure on dogs and see what it works. And believe me, it was again a big challenge to get the dogs because stray dogs are difficult things. If you put them in captivity, they bark the whole night out. I had to keep these dogs in captivity for 20 days. And no neighborhood would allow me to keep these 20 dogs for 20 days barking the whole night out. So we had to get to a farm. We had to create an artificial or temporary operation theater over there. And we did this experiment. It took us a huge amount of effort, though I'm telling you in very short. Having got these things done, we could establish for sh with certainty that fascia from outer aspect of thigh shrink significantly less. Look at this graph. Now, th I will have to explain you this a little bit. This up over here and this up over here, that is first row and third row, are the fascia taken from thigh and fascia taken from around the ear. They have been cut to a standard size of 10 mm by 25 mm. We had seven dogs like that in this particular set of experiment. We, ha ha we collected graft from them. We cut them to this particular size. And all of them were implanted again in the same dog. After five days, we reoperated this dog and collected the fascia again. And the second line is the fascia of, from the lateral aspect of the thigh after five days. And this is fascia from the, around the ear after five days. Look at it. It's obvious. The fascia from lateral aspect of the thigh has maintained its rectangular shape and has shrunken slightly. But look at the fascia from around the ear. It has become roundish. It has lost its rectangular shape. And some of them, particularly the first one, has shrunken significantly. Now, if this was what was to happen in the ear, this would cause perforation. There is nothing else that can happen. When we were doing these experiments, and my passion for repair of eardrum perforation was known to my patients. It was at that time, for the first time, that the lady Lux smiled at us. She came in the form of a lady. One of my lady patients had a perforation which was operated four times before without luck. She was tired of her ears. She approached me and she knew everything about the experiments. And she said that I want to be your first patient to do this. 
This was unbelievable to us. I never knew that I could get a live human who would say that, all right, I submit myself to you. Well, again, long thing cut short. We did the surgery, but after a lot, hell of a lot of precautions and cautions. We did that surgery and for next 20 days, I was on tender hooks. I was restless. I would call up her up almost twice a day asking her how was she. And she would always say, I'm fine. And I wouldn't believe that she's absolutely fine. How can that be so? After 10 days, I said, I want to see you anyway. Just meet me. And yes, she was absolutely fine. And after 20 days, my dear friends, she had her eardrum perforation sealed, closed. We had soon after that, soon after would mean six months down the line. Another patient coming the same way. That I know of that patient, you do the same thing for me also. We did it. And again it worked. And now we were getting more and more confident and sure that this is a doable thing. The animal experiments made it very clear that the fascia shrinks from the lateral aspect or outer aspect of the thigh shrinks significantly less. And so it can be used. This experiment changed us completely. Now we would do surgery from directly inside the ear. We would not cut, make any cuts around the ear. We would use fascia from outer aspect of the thigh and we would have no problems in terms of time because taking fascia from here and take, doing surgery from here would be two different sites, two different people can be working simultaneously on the same patient. Our surgical time dropped down from one hour to 20 minutes. This resulted obviously in our patient accepting our surgery very well because they had very little pain. Our success rate jumped from 90% to 98% and our operation time came down from one hour to 20 minutes, a saving of 40 minutes. This obviously has an immense repercussion on the fact that if we have 310 million cases to be operated upon and if we all do that by a standard procedure, we have 31 million cases to be reoperated, obviously because of failure. And if we have 40 minutes of time saving per patient, we have 226 million surgeon hours, 226 million assistant hours and 226 million nurse hours which can be saved. This is tremendous. Our surgical experience further went on and we had one downside about it and it was a very amusing downside. We realized that most of the colleagues found it very difficult to work from within the canal. They were very unwilling to change. Since the teachers don't change, the students don't adapt to the new techniques. That's the way we find the world around us today. By now, we have done more than 10,000 cases. They do extremely well. We get patients coming from across the country for this particular procedure. Particularly, we get patients from aviation industry because pilots are not allowed to fly if they have a perforated ear. Nor are they allowed to fly if they get their ear drums repaired by standard procedure. They have now no choice but to get their ear drum repaired by this procedure. So they have absolutely choiceless situation. Well, my dear friends, it's a brilliant way of doing the repair of ear drum perforation. It is considerably less painful, extremely effective, and very quick. Nobody thought of stitchless ear surgery. We thought about it. We believed in what our thoughts were. Our colleagues called us crazy. We worked over it. We developed it and it worked. All of you have brilliant sparks in your brains. Do you believe in the idea that you have? Do you have an idea? Do you believe in that idea? And do your colleagues call you crazy? If these three things, that is, having an idea, one, believing in that idea, that's important, and your colleagues calling you crazy, 
then develop it work over it and you will be the next ted speaker thank you very much